Wait a second. Do that again. Damn, honey, this is why I love you. Okay, the first time it was more like a damn, honey. The second time it was more like a, I kind of love you. I really do love you. Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and today I want to talk to you about three things to consider if you're considering raising a litter of puppies. Yeah, that'll work. One is the health and well being of your mama, two is the health and well being of your puppies, and three is the enormous time commitment that having a litter of puppies can be. So let's break each of these things down a little bit more. First of all, the health and well being of our mamas. That is of utmost importance through the whelping process, which we have shown in multiple videos, but also in the aftercare of those mamas once they've had that litter. So I'm just gonna grab the Piper Vex information because that's the litter I'm specifically talking to you about today. So the Piper Vex puppies are four weeks old. Things that we do with those mamas is I record temperatures twice a day for a minimum of three weeks after those puppies are born. The Piper puppies are four weeks old and you'd think, oh, well, we can just stop taking temperatures. No, 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 no. You still have to be aware of what's going on. And though this is maybe my normal step-by-step -step process, I can't say every litter is gonna fit this perfect cookie cutter shape. So we have to be able to read the situation and make smart decisions based on that information. So I'm going to be taking mama's temperature twice a day for at least three weeks because I wanna make sure that that mama doesn't have a temperature brewing. That could lead to a retained placenta or it could be an indication that mama has mastitis. And if mama has one of those things going on, she needs immediate veterinary care. Uh, Piper has actually struggled with mastitis with this litter. Uh, she has not had a blowout or anything like that, but she has had to be on antibiotics twice a day, as well as we've had to manually strip the teat that is affected with warm compresses. Pretty time consuming as well as painful for mama, so we wanna make sure that we're taking care of her to the best of our ability. And because we're taking these temperatures twice a day, it allows us to catch the onset of these type of things early and get her the help she needs as soon as possible before it becomes a major issue that could cost you the life of your mama. So we've been doing that with Piper. She has had a little bit of struggle with milk production. Could that be because of the mastitis? Could that be because of the antibiotics she's on, which was um, their safe antibiotics from the puppies to continue nursing, recommended by our vet, of course. But every mama and every labor and every pregnancy and delivery and the whole nine yards is different. Um, I can attest to this. My first baby, I struggled with milk production and I ended up having to switch to formula much sooner than I necessarily thought I would need to or wanted to um, for his weight gain. And then with my second baby right now, I am having no problems with milk production. That little chunk is gaining weight like a champ and is in over the 90th percentile for weight. So. Every situation is different, and that doesn't mean Piper's not a good mama. That's not what it means by any means. She just doesn't have enough milk to care for 10 puppies, um, as well as she's doing a great job laying with them, nursing them, cleaning them, taking care of them. She just doesn't have enough milk. So what that means, leading into my caring for those puppies and making sure their health and well-being is taken care of, is I do daily weight gains on puppies for a minimum of the first week that they're born. So let me show you quickly what that looks like. So I have my puppy whelping chart, which you may have seen this in, you know, preparing to whelp a litter video that we've talked about, which allows me to keep all of the pertinent information about the puppies in one place that's easily accessible. And like I said, typically I only have to weigh those puppies daily for the first week and I'm seeing good weight gain. So then I can say, hey, we can switch to weekly weigh-ins. Well, again, it's not a complete cookie cutter method every single litter. So I am actually taking daily weights on these puppies and they're four weeks old, guys. That's because we've been struggling with a consistent weight gain that I'd like to see. Now, everyone wants me to tell them an exact step-by-step, -step, well, how much should my puppy be gaining daily? How much should my puppies be gaining weekly? How much should they be eating if I'm bottle feeding? How much should they be eating when I start the supplementing process? Well, that is such a broad amount of information to throw at you, and it varies on so many factors from litter size, 
size to breed size to how much mom is actually producing and able to take care of those puppies and what we need to supplement that it just ranges so much. I typically like to see about 40 grams of weight gain a day in that first week with those puppies. And then after that, in that one to three week age range between 50 and 60 grams of weight gain. And then once they hit six weeks to eight weeks, I'm liking to see around 100 grams of weight gain a day. Typically we're not weighing daily, but that's what the average ends up being for our specific breed um, with our specific puppies. Um, and that does vary slightly. It's an average, like I said, based on litter size and also how fast those puppies are growing in those initial stages. But if I'm not seeing that kind of weight gain, that means I need to do something Something different. And that leads me into the enormous amount of time that this takes to take care of these puppies. Um, just getting daily weights on them, checking mama's temperatures, cleaning whelping boxes, getting the puppies the socialization that they need, nail trims. Um, we do weekly photos with those puppies. We also do a lot of story posts so that we can share the development of our litters with our puppy buyers. But also we're talking supplementing. What does that look like? Well, if we're in the initial stages when those puppies are zero to three weeks old, we're bottle feeding those puppies. And that means every three hours I'm out here supplementing puppies. Overnight, usually mama can help, but um, there's also the situation where if puppies aren't gaining weight well enough, I'm still gonna have to be out here overnight with them as well, doing whatever it takes to help them gain the weight that they need to and thrive. Then we are talking about when we transition to puppy mush, right? Typically when I start puppy mush at three weeks old, those puppies are getting puppy mush once a day. Again, monitoring weight gain. Um, and again, that amount of food is gonna depend on how big my litters are. The four puppy litters are gonna definitely eat a smaller amount than my 10 puppy litters, right? And then also um, that amount and offered times increases as they get older as well until when they're going home at eight weeks old, they're eating only twice a day, whole kibble, it's not a mush anymore, and mama's definitely completely done with them. So it is a gradual transition and it is all based on weight gain and adjusting that amount based on that information. So my typical litters, like I said, at three weeks I'm feeding once a day, at four weeks I'm feeding twice a day. Well, guess what the Piper puppies are eating? We just switched to four weeks, so they're now only eating puppy mush five times a day. Last week, when they were three weeks old, they were eating puppy mush six times a day to get that weight gain that we're looking for. And like I said, still monitoring those puppies' weight gains daily. Everything in green is good weight gain. Every once in a while, a little red will pop up, and that means I've lost a little weight. But if I look back at my weight gain from the day before, it averages out, so we're still seeing an increase. But that means I still need to do everything that I can to help these puppies continue to progress and gain weight, not only with the help of mama, who's still nursing them, but also through supplementation. I'm going to now show you what helping mama nurse them looks like, and then what the puppy mush supplementation looks like with these guys. So follow me over to the puppy stuff, which is what you're most interested about anyway, right guys? So puppies are all kind of sleeping in their little playpen area. Uh, they get to spend a lot of time in this playpen area right now, and then overnight they're still in their whelping box. But I'm going to get Piper, and I'm gonna bring her into this space, and then I'm gonna sneak in after Piper. She's checking her babies, which is great, but she's probably gonna need me to help her lay down with them. Um, because some of these puppies, Puffer, you little chow hound, and Hambone, you're a big eater. They're a little bit bigger puppies, and they're easy, more easily able to nurse with her when she's standing up. They, they, they cling on to a teat and they just go to town. But some of the other puppies that are a little bit smaller or shorter struggle a little bit to um, get latched on when she's still standing. So to give everybody the same opportunity to get enough um, milk from mama, I'm gonna ha have her help lay down. So. Sometimes getting her into that position is a little bit of a struggle. She's a big girl and um, she's, you know, checking her puppy. So I'm going to try and get her to come over to me. Piper, come here. Come here, Pipey Mama. Stay. Okay. Oh, flip, flop right over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ham, get on in there. Everybody's going to town. I'm just gonna sit with Piper um, and let her nurse completely. Um, good job. That's a lot of puppies to feed, isn't it, girl? 
Yeah. It's a lot of work being a mama. Something else to consider when Piper is nursing these puppies is she's got teeth on both sides, right guys? So we need to make sure she's laying back, exposing both sides so those puppies underneath can get easier access to, right Pipe? I'm gonna just help you, huh? Um, now, milk production takes a lot of work, a lot of calories. So mama's food is also increased drastically during this process where she has to um, eat a lot to be able to make the milk necessary for feeding all of these puppies. So watching mama's weight and making sure it's maintained is really important. Oh, Smalls, man, come here. You're the little guy. That's what you need to get in here. So he is a littler puppy and sometimes can have to, you know, struggle to compete. So pulling one of the bigger puppies off and giving him an opportunity is okay too. Oh, <laughs> Benny, man, you gotta give Smalls a little more chance here. Okay, and, and, hi, Ruth, get in there. Good. Here, see if there's something under there for you. There we go, Pipe. Good job, Mama. And these puppies are going to town, yeah. Emptied out, huh, Ruth? So Ruth popped off there. She's seeing if she can find another teat. That means the one she was on probably doesn't have as much milk left. You too, Benny, huh? Looking for another one. Um, Piper does have enough teats for each puppy, but um, each teat probably produces a little bit different amounts of milk. So um, some of the puppies will stay latched a little bit longer. And then once puppies are done eating, on Mama, we're gonna actually make some of that puppy mush I was talking about and then offer them that for one of their meals today and give them an opportunity to fill up the rest of their tummies on that. Hey, Benny. Hey, buddy. Puppy mush in the beginning stages is not a um, super clean process either, definitely a messy one. And as you can see, just from this amount of time that we're spending with Piper, and then also when I show you how to make puppy mush, you can see how time consuming this process is with all of the weight checks and all of the temperature checks, not only for mama and puppies, uh, but also to make that puppy mush for them. It's a pretty time consuming process. We're lucky enough that we have five full-time employees to help with this process, but if you aren't able to employ all of these employees to help you, and you have a full-time job outside the home, it's gonna be really hard to have enough time to take care of the puppies and do it the right way, um, and make sure that your mama's healthy, your puppies are healthy, and that you're, you're helping develop them properly. Knowing as much as you can to be prepared for that, and being able to make sure that you are committing the amount of time it's going to take over the next, well, eight weeks when the puppies are born, but also throughout the mama's pregnancy is really important um, to see all of the aspects. It's not just this 100% romantic idea of, oh, puppies are so cute and I would always love to have a litter or, um, you know, my kids would love the opportunity and experience that this would provide. Aiden sure loves the puppies, but I'm not doing this just for him to have an opportunity. You know, we are raising bird dogs that we enjoy training as well as guiding and hunting with ourselves um, that are great family companions. So we're not just making puppies to make puppies. We're not just making puppies um, and having litters to give our kids a great experience because there is a lot of time involved and risk for both the puppies and the mama. And we definitely don't want to put them through that unnecessarily. Go. Are you guys about done? More and more puppies are popping off. Hi, oh yeah, hi babe. I'm gonna snuggle her, Piper. Yeah, lick her face. Is she dirty? Here, go play with your mama. The more the puppies are finishing up, it's an indication that Piper's probably about done nursing and then we can go to put her back in her crate for a little bit and then make that puppy motion, offer that to the puppies here in just a minute too. 
Piper says, yeah, it's about good timing. Okay, good job, Mama. I've got my puppy distractor here so I can hopefully sneak Piper out. There we go. Okay, Piper, come here, baby. Good, Mama. Okay, let's go kennel up for just a little bit. Here you go, kennel. Okay, and let me go ahead and get my puppy mush made. So now I'm gonna make the puppy mush based on what these puppies need per feeding. Again, this amount is gonna vary depending on how many times you're feeding the litter, how many puppies they are, and how much weight gain they need. Uh, we also wanna increase the amount and opportunities to eat gradually so that it doesn't upset those puppies' tummies because this is new food for them, for mama, and it definitely could upset their stomachs if it's added too quickly. So we've built up to this amount. We've got um, a blender bottle, which is what I use to blend up my milk replacer. We use Espelac uh, from Pet Egg Puppy Milk Replacer. Now, this is gonna seem like a lot, but I take a cup, an entire cup of puppy milk replacer, add it to my blender bottle. Then I get hot water going, because hot water is important. Got my little ball to blend it. Hot water two entire cups. It's one to two ratio. That's a lot of puppy formula. And make sure my lid's on tight. I've got another video where the lid wasn't on tight. Shake this up really good. Okay, then I need my puppy food. We're feeding Yukonuba large breed puppy food. I am currently using one half a cup of the puppy food per feeding, which ends up with five times a day being five times a half, two and a half cups of food, right? Uh, by the time they go home, these puppies should be eating one cup of food in the morning per puppy and one cup of food in the evening per puppy. So these puppies will be eating 20 cups of food by the time they go home. So I kind of gradually increase that amount as well. I have used many different blenders in the past, and so far this one's my favorite. It's gonna be loud here. I can still see there's a few larger pieces floating around in there. I'm gonna do it again. That looked a lot better. Um, I don't want any big chunks. These puppies do have little puppy teeth right now, uh, but they're still doing a lot of lapping, and I don't want them to choke on a bigger piece. And then as time goes on, this amount of puppy food and the consistency that this puppy mush is, is going to change because we're going to be gradually transitioning to that whole kibble, like I mentioned, over the course of the next four weeks. So I'll pour out my powder here. People ask us a lot of times, why don't you use wet food, like soak the food? This ends up being just as um, thin consistency and easy for those puppies to lap up. Um, but if I was using whole kibble, I would definitely want to soak it in it until it was completely soaked through wet and mushy. Then add my milk replacer. And once I get this mixed around with my handy dandy special fork that's been around forever, it's, the, it's literally labeled the puppy mush fork. Mix that up. I'll show you what this consistency looks like and then I'll get it set in with the puppies. While I'm doing this, if I see any big chunks, I'm going to pull those out. Okay. Still pretty soupy, pretty liquidy. And then by next week, this is going to be transitioning to be a lot firmer, but still very wet. Set that out and then say, hey, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. You guys ready for a second opportunity? And every time we offer the puppies extra food, I keep track of how well they ate, if they were interested, if they weren't, so that I can, whoops, adjust my timing a little bit if I need to on when I'm offering mama, when I'm offering the extra supplementing, so that I make sure that they're getting as much out of it as I can. Hey, okay, baby Ruth. And some, peop some people, some puppies may be less interested than others, depending on how much they were able to supplement with mama. But learning how to eat and lap up food is also very important for these puppies to develop because they are going to need to learn how to eat eventually, right? 
because all the puppies go home and are on kibble when they're at their new houses. I can kind of evaluate, like I said, who's interested. Wendy says, meh, I might be still overly full from mama. Same with smalls, he's not as interested. But they're also smaller puppies in this litter, so something that I'm going to keep monitoring as we offer puppy mush. If they're consistently saying, nah, I'd rather just wait for mama next time, I'm going to make sure that with those two puppies specifically, I'm offering puppy mush first, then mama after that, so that they can learn when food is offered, they do need to try and eat it. Because like I said, this is an important life skill to learn how to eat food, right guys? Small says, I'm just so tired. My belly's so full. And I would rather have a little bit of food left over than the puppies clean it up completely. That means that they're still not getting quite enough. <laughs> when you're falling asleep where you're at, that means you're probably pretty full, huh, guys? Hambone, you're looking pretty full, man. So just to kind of wrap everything up, you can see how much time this takes, right? From taking care of the mamas properly to making sure the puppies are taken care of properly. And all of the additional steps that if you don't have a litter that just goes from A to Z super smoothly and easily, that you're gonna have to have the time to take and commit to. And we don't know if the puppies are gonna need extra help or the mamas are gonna have a health issue when they're in this process. So we need to be able to make sure that we have the time that we can commit in case things don't go as smoothly as we would like because as you can see these puppies make a mess all the time and it's a lot of work to clean up after them too guys and as you get bigger and older the messes are just gonna get bigger too yeah and then we'll get to start going outside to potty train which will be a little bit easier on the mess making um, but there'll still be messes to clean up Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped answer some questions for you if you were on the fence about whether to have a litter or not. And if you are deciding to have a litter, to be as prepared as possible to make sure that you are checking all those boxes, making sure that you're taking care of mama, the puppies, and that you're not just trying to follow a step-by-step -step plan, that you make adjustments when needed based on the information you're gathering. I'm Kat the Dog Trainer. These are a ton of little cute puppies that I'm gonna cuddle with, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.